The Senate released a new report this morning identifying widespread security and intelligence failures that led to the January 6th assault on the Capitol. The attack by Trump supporters is linked to five deaths. The staggering analysis details critical breakdowns involving several federal agencies and includes multiple recommendations to address the failures and protect the Capitol from possible future attacks. Chris Van Cleve spoke exclusively with the four key senators who spearheaded the bipartisan report. He's on Capitol Hill. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. This is really the first big look at what went wrong on January 6th. We sat down with the senators leading it, Republicans Roy Blunt and Rob Portman, Democrats Amy Klobuchar and Gary Peters. What their investigation found was a litany of problems and missed opportunities. Their recommendations aim to prevent something like January 6th from ever happening again. What was the most surprising breakdown or failure that you learned about through this investigation? The intelligence failure. How long it took the Defense Department to respond. The Capitol Hill police were not prepared in any sense. Sadly, it was the frontline officers who were left to defend us, to defend our staff, and to defend democracy. In a rare bipartisan joint interview, the Democrats and Republicans leading a Senate investigation sat down for a candid conversation about what went wrong allowing a mob to storm the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Their report out this morning found warning signs were missed by federal law enforcement and Capitol Police. Part of the reason it was overlooked is people were saying, well, this just can't happen. And, it, and mm -hmm. these groups of folks, they, they can't do that. Well, now we know they can. We know that what happens on the Internet can be translated into physical action on the Capitol grounds or in towns across this country. We've got to treat domestic terrorism with the seriousness that it deserves. These police officers were put, as I said, in an impossible position. Right. They didn't have adequate training. They didn't have adequate equipment. They didn't have adequate barriers. They didn't have adequate communication. They didn't have the intelligence to know what was coming. And yet they valiantly supported the effort to protect the Capitol, protecting the vice president, protecting all the members of Congress, protecting democracy. The report says around 75 percent of the Capitol Police officers working on the 6th did not have protective equipment like helmets and shields. One unit wasn't able to access their gear because it was locked in a bus. Some riot shields had been improperly stored and shattered when used. When the acting chief of staff of the Army uh, was asked about um, how come this didn't come together right away, and he said, you know, there's these National Guards are incredible. But you just can't pick this moment to have it be like a pickup game. That they're all going to just be able to suddenly combine with no contingency plan in place. He said this was a Super Bowl of attacks. And you need a plan in place of how this is going to work. I know that the, the focus of the report was on the, the response and not the, the whys, uh, the, the things leading up to this attack, but it, there, there are a couple of points in there where, you, where they reference the crowd that had gathered for President Trump's speech. Uh, his, his speech on the mall is, 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 is given in its entirety as an appendix. Would the attack on the Capitol have happened without that event on the ellipse? No, this wouldn't have happened if he hadn't done all those things. His false claims of this, um, of this election uh, is what led to this insurrection. Our job was not to go back and talk about what happened in terms of the motivation. It was about, okay, once it happened, you know, what did we do here in the Capitol? And how could this have happened? And how can we ensure it never happens again? Doesn't somebody need to look at the how, not just the why? Yes. But at the same time, you've got the Justice Department pursuing 450 prosecutions right now. I think you're going to find a lot of information that you can only find in one way, and that's to pursue this through the legal system, and, and that will lead you in new places if it's necessary to go there. Doesn't that kind of give a pass, though, to the, the rhetoric and the conspiracy theories that, that are being spread even by members of the Senate about uh, the election and what happened on January 6th? The Justice Department is looking purely at you know, criminal activity on the day of January 6th. Okay, so I just want to inter in intercede here because Roy and I don't agree on this point. Our country needs this 9-11 style commission to get to the bottom of all this. While the prosecutions are going on, you can be looking at uh, the causes and everything. But our mission right now was to protect this capital going forward. 
The Senate Rules Committee and the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee jointly made 20 recommendations, including appointing a new Capitol Police chief, bolstering training, enhancing communication between law enforcement agencies, improving coordination across federal, state, and local governments, and evaluating threats of violence on social media. Most of the changes the senators believe can be adopted immediately, marking a rare moment of agreement in a very divided Congress. And we believe that our duty uh, was not just to say, oh, what a mess this was, and we disagree. Part of the message here is that we can figure this out together. Senators Klobuchar and Blunt plan to pursue legislation that would allow the Capitol Police chief to directly ask the National Guard for assistance in an emergency like the 6th. That should speed up guard response if needed. The Capitol Police tell us in part it welcomes the analysis and agrees improvements are needed specific to intelligence analysis and dissemination, but insisted at no point prior to the 6th did it receive actionable intelligence about a large-scale attack. Just last night, we learned the number two at the department who was involved in the planning and response on January 6th was forced to resign. Tony.